Bortle here back from the LCS 5 event of the online format. We have here the victor, the champion, the winner of LCS 5 himself. What's up? Introduce yourself to the channel, man, to the world. Uh, I am David Edwards. I won LCS 5, surprisingly to me. <laughs> Yo, uh, surprisingly enough, this was the debut for Rise of the Duelist, which uh, I'm checking this out right now, and I only see like a like a handful of those cards, so that's pretty wild, you know? How did it feel to face up all the Dragmas out there? It, it, was, uh, it was expected, honestly. Uh, I thought, honestly... Um, if you look at my hand traps, I was uh, more I was expecting some Numeron. Uh, I just didn't play. I didn't see those cards like all, all either two days at all. Man, uh, more sad news for the Numeron. So oh my goodness. Well, uh, yeah. Anyway, before we jump into the actual deck profile, would you like to do some shout outs? Man? Oh, of course. Yes, absolutely. Uh, shout out to my team, uh, Pandora's Prodigies and our sponsor, uh, Jam One TCG for sure. Absolutely. And then uh, shout out to uh, Duelist Academy. I am uh, a member of them and bigger bigger shout out to Asala and uh, Cody Angelov uh, those two helped me with the deck and uh, my good friend who also taught forward with Dragon Link uh, Mike Thomas um, shout out to a, spe a big shout out to my girlfriend who allowed me to play Yu-Gi-Oh all weekend long I'm sure she got irritated <laughs> but she didn't do it anyway uh, so yeah shout out shout out to anybody else I'm forgetting uh, like I said I'm just kind of excited uh, that I won some kind of spacing a little bit Oh, man, it's all good. So, uh, yeah, the great thing he mentioned everybody. Well, uh, yeah, without further ado, would you like to uh, take it away with your deck profile? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, I guess we'll start uh, from the top line. Uh, the top line is pretty much all, like, your one-card combos is where, uh, where what those are. Uh, all these cards are uh, pretty much just uh, one-card slash uh, pseudo one-card combos. Uh, so those are pretty much what lets you play the game. And then uh, the next line and all the way to uh, Foolish Burial is what I would call my extenders. Um, so uh, these are uh, in line of what I think is the best extenders in the deck, starting with uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon. Uh, this card is probably the best. Uh, no, it's not even probably. It is the best extender in the deck, and then it's not even close. Uh, wow, the, the fact that you can just combo off uh, popping it with the tracer is pretty nice, right? Yeah, and then like a special thing is like uh, when Nibiru was popular, not so much in this tournament, but uh, when Nibiru was popular, it, uh, you just needed this, and like uh, you really just needed this to like you know, play through the Nibiru after you get uh, after Nibiru gets dropped, because they give you a token, and then you just bring back the tuner, make the needle fiber, bring back the uh, summon the dragon tuner off the needle fiber, make the LP and move, and then like that's just full combo still. So yeah, that like that card's insane. Um, and then uh, from there, uh, you see the uh, the rocket uh, rocket cards, which is a uh, you know a small rocket engine, uh, router, uh, tracer, and absor or, uh, magna rocket and recharger. Um, people ask me why I play uh, magna magna rocket over uh, silver rocket. I think the card's name is. Uh, there's two reasons. Uh, one, uh, it's a utility for letting you OTK. Um, there, there are points in the game where you can uh, have Bortle Sword, Bortle Sword, oh, and God, this yes. card, this card, and like one other card, and you can use this uh, attack with this, and then use the Bortle Sword to switch this, and then this will destroy itself uh, and send and send one of the monsters. So that's just like an easy OTK. Another thing is uh, shifting this. You um, you can shift this to out like problematic cards that you normally wouldn't get over so like this card's actually like really 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 good uh in my in my opinion but you know it could it could just be personal preference um and then we get down to my hand traps uh, the first one being the best hand trap uh, in my opinion in the game uh gamma this card is uh just absolutely insane like it does so much uh like it being a tuner, being able to special summon two monsters, destroying uh, monsters, just head and shoulders the best hand trap in my opinion right now. Oh yeah, it's definitely uh, one of the outs to the Numeron's Exile, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, then Infinite, which I think is probably like the second best hand trap um, in the game currently. Uh, Ash Blossom, uh, I played two because it's a once per turn card and it's not a light so it doesn't really help me when I have chaos space, 
but it's still like the probably the most flexible hand trap in the game. It hits like over half the like card pool. Um, and then you see three ogres. So, so normally, like I said, uh, it's a one that this is another once per turn card, but it gets utility for two reasons because it's light. Um, it's a it, it, uh, it stops uh, network, which, like I said, I was expecting more and uh, more of those. And um, you have to stop that. You just have to stop that because there's just no way to really win once that card resolves. So that's why the three ogre. Um, it was often it's pretty much side out almost every uh, game that isn't uh, Numeron. Um, I could see it having mirrored against the Infernal Noble Knight deck, which I only played one of, uh, which was in top eight against uh, Kamal. So, but other than that, I think uh, it's probably the least impactful uh, hand trap. And then I just have uh, the rest of the cards are either uh, what I you would call, call quote unquote bricks or uh, cards that you would want to search. You wouldn't want. Uh, in your hand necessarily um, which is why I play 50 50 cards because you see there's like a what's this eight eight of them so like that's why I play a, a bigger uh, deck count you know to prevent uh, drawing them along with uh, hand traps because usually what you want is like like maybe one to two hand traps your one of your starter cards and an extender you know, but if you play a lower deck count, you have more chances to draw multiples of uh, cards you don't want necessarily. Oh, so is fifty the new goo? How come you didn't want to like just bump it up to sixty? You were just ten cards away, man. Okay, well, um, we still want to see a uh, card like your your power cards, right? So you want to go as small as possible while uh, so you can maintain your consistency. There's not, and plus, I, there's just like not ten cards that I can think of that are that just makes the deck better or adds anything significant to the deck, right? So there's just like not another ten cards that are like, in my opinion, better than the cards that I have here. So, you know, I just I played what I thought would be the best uh, number for consistency and having hand traps. Okay, perfect explanation. As far as this extra deck goes, uh, I guess you can go ahead and explain it, but it looks a little standardish. I don't know. It's 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 pretty standard. I mean, it's not really anything special to be honest. Um, I guess the only thing that would technically be special would be the uh, heretic sphere. I guess, quote unquote, like some people play uh, Delindris. I think it's is the guy who brings himself back. Um, I bring I, I summon this card. Like uh, ninety percent of my games when I'm going first on my end board, um, for a couple reasons. One, um, it's an interruption, and two, it let it lets you follow up uh, your turn with a safer or like a brotar if you hadn't seen it. It basically gets you your follow up to guarantee your game. So there have been games where like they would break my board, uh, but this card would get me like into like a safer or something like that. And then you'll have like a Brotar in your graveyard. And that just like gives you so much value um, for your following turn that you usually can just kill them, kill them 90% of the time. Cause they have to invest so many cards just to break your board. So uh, that's really the only thing that I think that's, I guess you could say not standard. Well, Everything uh, else. I, I guess there's this uh, Buster Whelp. I've seen people use the uh, B-Cop in the past. Well, uh, the Buster Whelp is a uh, well. It's it's basically just another B cop, but it's better. Um, not because it has a, like an effect or anything, but because it's a uh, a it's a light and it's a dragon, which is the most important part because uh, it lets you stop being under your guard dragon combos or uh, under your guard dragon restriction. So that's the mo and it's generic, so it lets you uh, use this with like things like uh, Nibiru tokens. Uh, tuners and stuff like that so uh, I can understand why people play Beacop but I think this is just better because it be it helps you uh, get under your guard dragon restriction. Overall a very nice extra deck. Uh, do appreciate you playing uh, Bortle Sword because you know it is a dragon. It's a nice I mean, finisher. Yeah, the, uh, you, you just can't uh, play uh, I mean you could technically play Access Code Talker but Bortle Sword, Bortle Sword is uh, just better in this deck because it's a dragon, it's a dark, so you don't have to worry about Tracer or the Guard Dragons. Um, and you just don't play, you don't play any Link 3s to, like, maximize 
access code talker so it's like at the most it'll be at like 43 and you need two monsters to like get game whereas this you just need like it and like another monster to get game 90 percent of the time okay sweet um yeah i guess your side decks next um so yeah uh i don't like i said i pretty standard side deck ish uh dark ruler probably is what got me uh the finals uh I, the idea of dark ruler was um that if i played a combo deck that wasn't inferno noble knight because like uh this card uh it's kind of iffy against that deck because they I, I didn't see anybody do this, but you can uh, take the six card out of your hand when they draw. Um, if you want to see that, go, uh, you know, subscribe to Duelist Academy's Patreon. They have that combo up. But uh, uh, so Dark Will is kind of iffy against that deck at times. Um, but against every other combo deck, you kind of want this and, like, say something else so you can uh, break through the board. But you know, I think Dark Ruler is necessi necessary for the combo decks, especially a uh, rock combo deck. Um, and then you uh, you have uh, what is known as uh, Trap Dust Shoot, <laughs> a pointer of the Red Lotus. Uh, I didn't draw this very much uh, except in the finals game, too. Um, this actually, there's all, there's um, actually a consideration for a, uh, what could be a better card, which is, a, I think it's called a Dragon's Prison. It came out in uh, the new set. It lets you uh, target a card in your opponent's graveyard, and then you special summon it, and then you can banish two cards of the same type on on each other's field. So you can do that against like the Lord decks, pretty much. Like you can take a Lord, and then if they have a Lord, you can banish uh, both of the Lords. So like that's like really really good, especially in the grind. So um, that that card could be also in this slot, and then you have uh, Triple Lightning Storm, Double Twin. Uh, it's pretty much for like the back row decks, you could consider playing Lightning Storm uh, against combo because it like it eats and negate ninety percent of the time. So you know that's that. And then you have Droplet, which uh, which is kind of controversial uh, because everybody's playing Herald. Uh, you can't technically send for cost from the hand, which uh, kind of hurts this card's playability. But I think it was still good enough to be played against like certain things that you just need to stop from like happening period like you like zexel is a card that you need to stop from happening uh vfd is another card you need to stop from happening like those cards uh need to, you need to negate them at all possibility or you could just you just auto lose those games and then uh the the best two one ofs i think these two cards should be in everybody's side deck in my opinion oh yeah reboot and uh pankatrops nice Oh, yes. Uh, a card uh, I guess I would like to mention is probably that new tactics card. Since we have access to every single card, you know, for the online format through Dueling Book, mm -hmm. was there a reason why you didn't want to play that card? So, um, Tactics Talent could be, like, a group in, like, certain, with other certain cards, like, uh, for instance, Call by the Grave. Uh, I, Call by the Grave and Tactics Talents uh, are specifically kind of remind me of each other uh, when you're going first. Because uh, they essentially are gonna do around the same thing. Like you get, you're gonna get hand trapped, and then you're gonna activate this card, and then you're never gonna like be stealing a stealing a card out of your hand. And uh, so, like 90% of the time, you're gonna be drawing two cards, um, which isn't bad. But like, I just feel like it could just be any extender in that situation. It could just be any other extender in my deck for the, in that situation instead of just that. And it's just like the same thing with Call by the Grave, like. Yeah, I could have Call by the Grave, but this could just be any other extender because, uh, you know, most of your extenders just let you play through hand traps. And the hand traps that you can't or have a hard time playing through, neither one of those cards do a lot against it because they already did what they were supposed to do. So, like, for instance, Gamma, Nibiru, and per you can't even activate it with per in permanence. So, like, those cards... The, while it is a good card, it's a great card. I just don't think it was necessary for my deck. Um, my friend did play it, and I could see why he did it. Um, his deck was a uh, slightly different, a lot different than mine. Oh yeah, just uh, maybe uh, ten more cards. <laughs> Plus, he played equip spells. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, a great explanation. So uh, it's no surprise. Um, with closing thoughts, you did face uh, Megalith in the finals. Wow. So uh, were you really uh, close to like losing that matchup? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, game one, I had no chance because I only opened up an Ash. 
game two, uh, you know, at worst, uh, you know, I probably have to play through one hand trap. This deck can play through two hand traps <laughs> if given the right hand. And then game three was where it gets iffy because I'm go I lost because I lost game one. I have to go into game three going second. Um, so I I have uh, I had a, a I had a pretty good idea how his deck worked, uh, and if you watch the finals, you'll see that uh, my hand was like Gamma uh, Droplet Dark Ruler. Well, normally people would see Gallic Granite, and you are we already know it's going to add the most broken card in the game, which is Black Dragon, and people would Gamma there. But I knew uh, that I had Dark Ruler in my hand, so I knew that I could prevent him from like putting me out of the game that way. So I didn't have to drop the gamma there, so I could just save it. Um, the other win condition of his uh, deck um, is there's a card that lets you as a thought your opponent, just like as a thought. And Droplet uh, lets me win, win uh, beat that card. So that was my idea, and which is why I never dropped the gamma. Um, but I think he could have won, actually, after I comboed. Um, I could have broke his board but I couldn't do any damage. And he just had like three cards of hand drawn into a fourth plus Blood Dragon. But I think uh, he scooped uh, a bit early. Well, uh, again, congrats on winning this LCS event, man, for the online format. Yeah. I mean, uh, I went undefeated. My first LCS was wild. Undefeated? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. And uh, with that, listeners, if you're not a part of Bortal Nation, sub for Bortal. It's that easy and it's free. Oh, God, yes. Bortal, oh, God, God. yes.